It's about time to give you some updates on raw panel and some recent developments that we have done in the hardware manager in uh, the uh, Skyhoy panels, but also in the various uh, external raw panel devices like uh, Stream Decks and, and so on. We have added something called processors. It's really useful when you are integrating with raw panel, when you want to have some widgets like a VU meter pulsing, or if you want to use UTF-8 text, we have made that really easy using these processors. So real quick, we are working on a frame shot today. Uh, that device looks like this, and uh, it is uh, here on the table next to me with red sides, so we can follow what is happening in the display. We are not going to use it with Reactor, actually, so that is uh, what we would normally do. We have basically set up the hardware manager to listen on port only, and when we do that, uh, we uh, usually disconnect the uh, internal socket connection, which is the one that would be used to connect Reactor to the panel itself. So we are on listen on port and then everything else is basically pretty much standard in here. So that's all fine. And uh, to connect to the panel, um, I would need its IP address. I think sometimes it's shown in the display. And of course, I know it already. It's right here. So what am I even thinking? Um, uh, Netcat is my go-to application for this. And yes, it doesn't work <laughs> with HTTP in front of. So let's try it like this. And then the port is typically 9923. Okay, list. If I type that command, I force the panel into ASCII mode. Uh, normally, we communicate with binary mode, proto buffers, and so on. So efficient data exchange format, but we, we have both ASCII and, and the other one. So the uh, what you are looking for, actually, is to see if the support is for processors. So um, this support list of features is, um, I mean, if, if you don't find processors, that is not going to support what I'm going to show you right now. So that's probably a good idea to keep in mind. The manual for raw panel is here and there's a section called processors. So please go check that out. And it tells you that we can do graphics conversion. We can give you audio meters, text to graphics, strength meter, and there's uh, various other things. And I'm basically going to copy paste these examples. The only thing I can't copy paste is the example for graphics conversion because so th this many characters cannot be facilitated using Netcat for whatever reason. So you'll have to find other clever ways of doing that, like programming a little TCP client. Uh, but it does work, <laughs> but that would be for you to prove. The idea is that you can actually uh, base64 encode a PNG, JPEG or GIF image and send over. So all the conversion will be done. I mean, don't send a multi megabyte image, but send something that has the pixel dimensions of the displays, then you will get the benefit of not having to convert it into the uh, like um, format described otherwise in this document. because. You have to scale it down to grayscale or um, uh, monochrome, or if it's even an RGB image, it has to be reduced to like five or six bits on each channel to be shown in the display. This just makes it easy. You can have fit, fill, stretch, uh, different color modes and width and height. You need to set that up. Okay. So um, these are examples you can try out if you want to. I want to go straight to this one, uh, and I think it might be useful for me to. Um, uh, already now, I need to figure out which uh, hardware component I'm going to talk to on the panel. So let's just quickly try and, and check this out here. Um, what would be nice? Uh, probably number 17 or 10. Okay, so let's try that. Let's try uh, 10 for this one. And we'll um, basically paste this uh, JSON data over into the um, uh, dialog here. So let's do that. And now we see... Was it 10? Yeah, okay. So I got it exactly right there as expected, or almost expected. <laughs> I just forgot. Now, um, what else can we do? So that would be like a VU meter. Here's a VU meter with a uh, title uh, string. So if we uh, sent that over to the panel, then uh, we get that additional title in. Let me see. Is that not true? This message adds, it, ah, okay. My copy pasting skills is not super cool. So let's just try this again and then uh, not spam it with all that stuff. So, um, ah, okay, I'm sending it to hardware components 37. Uh, I need to send it to number, well, 11. I'll just take the one next to it, okay, like that. Paste. Okay, so there we have it going over to tile number 11, having a little uh, string on top of the VU metering. So you can probably imagine that we can go about the same things with these having um, uh, 
Um, uh, 12, try this, okay. And send it over to that one as well. All right, so we can do all these. That was the VU meters. Let's try text to graphics. That is um, uh, basically good because we um, can use, oh, I think there was something in between here that we want to see. Text to graphics. Ah, okay, now I know what I mean. It is, uh, yes, it's uh, basically um, special purpose processor. Okay, so let's just skip that one because it is something else than we think. Uh, strength meter is uh, pretty nice and cool. So, uh, of course, again, you, you will have to know the pixel dimensions of your display. So in this case, it would be like the width is 64, oh wait, 80, 96. It's 96 on this one and the height is 64 and it would be, let's try number nine. So if we sent this over, then what would happen? We get this uh, strength meter over there on this side. So it's definitely designed to um, be used on a T-bar display of this length and so on. We have a test processor, okay. And then the unit text, which is probably going to be super useful for many of you guys if you want to have unit text uh, um, UTF-8 um, on your panels. Uh, let's just try number 10 again and copy paste this one in. Uh, we could also just quickly use Raw Panel Explorer to clear the whole thing. Okay, and then, and there you go. You now have some Chinese and uh, kanji and whatnot on the display. So um, that's cool. And more examples are shown here. So uh, also, if you want them without a headline, then you can have that. Again, uh, make sure that you have the dimensions of the display. Those pixels dimensions are discoverable. If you click this and then you go down, you can see it's highlighted that these are the pixel dimensions of the display. So it, it is actually stated from the panel zone topology that is being sent over to you. So it shouldn't be that difficult to uh, figure out. Then there's a little bit of range mapping here, which is, I think, related to um, how to use the VU metering. Yes. So um, read that if you're interested in that. If we go to the strength and VU metering, there were probably some examples that dealt with that. Um, or otherwise, it is explained down there in the strength metering section, range mapping. So for some converters like strength meter and audio meter, it's possible to remap. Yes. Okay. So you don't have a linear range, but you can kind of rearrange how the, the meter responds to the input data. So that's also really useful. This is all done to make sure that you guys have an easy time using raw panel and these widgets. I would love to learn about more widgets you would like because it, it means you can send over integer data to set the strength meter and then we will calculate the graphics that is being put into the display. And for some systems, this is really essential to have a beautiful presentation of, of the data, an easy way to, to get them onto the panel and not having to actually generate the image on the um, um, client side before it's getting sent over to the panel. So I hope you liked it. Uh, and uh, let me know if you have more ideas for what the raw panel pro protocol could be um, developed into doing. This is, um, there are many ways uh, we can expand the protocol and uh, ideas can be sent to innovationlab at skahoy.com anytime. I'll be in the other end and happy to chat with you about it.